Today we're going to be looking at the derivatives of inverse trig functions. Now a lot of teachers will present these formulas but not really explain where they come from or how they're derived. So let's take a look at this. We're going to start by exploring uh, the derivative of the arc sine here or the inverse sine. So let's start by labeling our function here. Let's say we have y equals sine x. Now remember to find the inverse you simply switch the x and y. So switch x and y. So we're going to take our function here and we're going to rewrite this as x equals sine y. So I'm going to go ahead and label this angle here y. And remember, if you have to remember here, Soka Toa, remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, so we have our right triangle here. So sine of y is opposite and over 1, because anything over 1, okay, so opposite over hypotenuse. So this is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. And now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and solve for what b is here. And we're going to use Pythagorean theorem to solve that. So I'm going to write out x squared plus b squared equals 1 squared. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And then we solve this here by subtracting off x squared from both sides. So we get b squared equals, now 1 squared is just 1, minus x squared. And finally to solve for b here we take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So we wind up with b equals the square root of 1 minus x squared. Now technically this should be plus or minus the square root of 1 minus x squared here, but since we're dealing with length, I only care about the positive version of this. So I'm going to say b equals the square root of 1 minus x squared. Now what we're looking to do here, remember, is to take the derivative of the inverse. So we're going to go ahead and use implicit differentiation to take the derivative of x equals sine y. Okay, so the derivative of x becomes 1. Derivative of sine of y becomes cosine of y. And then remember, we implicitly have dy dx. So let's go ahead and solve for what the derivative dy dx is. I'm going to go ahead and say dy dx. I'm going to divide by cosine y on both sides. And I wind up with dy dx equals 1 over cosine of y. Well, remember, cosine now is your adjacent over your hypotenuse. So here's y. If we look at our adjacent over hypotenuse, that's going to be the square root of 1 minus x squared over 1. So this becomes 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared over 1 is just the same thing here. So dy dx is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So there's your derivative of the uh, inverse sine function. All right, so you can apply this same method for cosine and tan. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at that here. So let's say our function started as y equals cosine x. So once we have this, again, to find the inverse, we switch our x and y. So we get x equals cosine y. And we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to label this y. We're going to put our right angle in. And in this case, remember, uh, cosine is your adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is x over 1. So we're going to get adjacent is uh, x here. Sorry. So adjacent is x. Hypotenuse is 1. And then again, we can solve for this side. Um, but I think you can see it's going to come out to be the same thing it was last time. So a in this case is going to wind up to be the exact same thing, the square root of 1 minus x squared. So I can actually erase this here. And let's put in square root of 1 minus x squared. That's from the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so once we have this, 
Again, we're going to do the same thing here. We want to figure out what the derivative is, so let's use implicit differentiation. So if we have x equals cosine y, take the derivative, we get 1 equals negative sine y dy dx. And now we want to solve for dy dx, so we simply divide by negative sine y on both sides. Divided by negative sine y. So we get dy dx equals negative 1 over sine of y. And now we just have to fill this back in. The sine of y, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So this can be going to become negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And there is the derivative of the inverse cosine function. Okay, lastly here, let's take a look at tan 1. You're going to be doing the same idea here to solve this. Okay, so if we have the function y equals tan x, uh, remember we're going to go ahead and switch our x and y to find the inverse. So here's the inverse uh, tan y. And let's go ahead and put y in here. Now remember of Sokotoa, okay, tan is your uh, opposite over adjacent. So this ends up being opposite. And then this is your adjacent, okay, x over 1. So then we need to solve this for our c term here, which is our hypotenuse. So let's use Pythagorean theorem to do that. So we're going to get here x squared plus 1 squared equals c squared. So we get x squared plus 1 equals c squared. So finally take the square root of both sides. And we wind up with c equals the square root of x squared plus 1. So c, which is the square root of x squared plus 1. All right, then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing here. We want the derivative of the inverse function. So let's go ahead and take the derivative here. So if we have x equals tan of y, okay, tan y here, take the derivative, we get 1 equals the secant squared uh, y, and then dy dx. Okay, so then again, simply all we need to do is divide by secant squared y on both sides. So we wind up with dy dx equals 1 over secant squared y. Now remember, uh, Sokotoa, I know a lot of people get confused with the secant part here, but if cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, then if we're dealing with the secant, okay, of let's say y in this case, since we're doing that here, it's just going to be our hypotenuse over our adjacent in this case. So this is going to become 1 over our hypotenuse, which is the square root of x squared plus 1, over our adjacent, which is 1, over 1, and we're going to square that. So this winds up being 1 over the square root squared gets rid of the square root here. So this becomes x squared plus 1. And 1 squared is just 1, so it's going to be over 1. So we wind up with x squared plus 1. So 1 over x squared plus 1 is the derivative of the inverse tan function. So there you go. That's where your uh, inverse derivative of inverse functions comes from. I uh, hope that helped out a lot. I think it's good to see where these formulas come from so that if you ever do get stuck, you can always derive them yourself. So I hope this helped, and uh, this is Beyond the Test. Have a great day. Do you have a topic that you would like to see us create a video for? If so, leave a comment below, and we'll try to get to it. Have a great day, everyone.